Right, um, if, before I read um, the passage that I intend looking at, which is Matthew 17, 14 through to verses 21, uh, a little bit of prayer, I think, is necessary. Our oh, Father in heaven, as I said about dividing your word and looking what exactly you meant by some of the the things you say in this, these wonderful verses. Lord, That I just pray that you just inspire people today, Lord, just to have that little bit more faith, to move forward that little bit more, to trust in you that little bit more. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, it's funny how God works sometimes. And... I sometimes reflect over the years of where I've seen God work mightily and other times I've prayed for something and it just hasn't happened. And, you know, we have explanations and we can seek the Lord when sometimes things that that don't go as we would expect. And so I'm going to try and unpack a little bit about what happened here that, that, that day and that time with Jesus' disciples, and to give you some encouragement just to to move forward and to go forward. And sometimes things just are circumstances and things that you're told, you're taught, you're hearing arguments, sometimes actually just affect your belief and your belief in God. And today I just want to move you maybe beyond that a little bit. So without further ado, I'll I'll read you Matthew 17 uh, uh, from 14 through to 21. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And Jesus says in verse 17, O unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Verse 21 is actually missing uh, from the NIV version uh, of the Bible. And verse 21 just says, but, I'll paraphrase it a little bit. Jesus said to him, but some only come out by prayer. And in some versions it says, by prayer and fasting. In the King James and the New King James, and depending on which translation, you have that. And we reflected a little bit on that, um, as well as as time time allows. So what's happened here? What's happened that the disciples, if we look at Luke, uh, chapters 10, 17, what happened there Were the disciples successful in praying for people and things happening? Jesus had set them out to do a task. And look at what the results were. Let's just find my my bit there. 
the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. They'd been commissioned to go out at the start of chapter 10. And he said that he sent after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them, the harvest is plentiful. And he goes on to do this and, you know, and he gave them full instructions. And they came back full of joy that you know, God was working through them as he had commanded them to do so. And then he replied in verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I gave... I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but you rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So let's remember this, that, you know, you know God wants us to see things happen, to see mighty things happen. But what he's actually saying there, he says, the main thing is, though, that you are born again, that you are saved. Let us, let us, let us just remember that, as, as we said about that sometimes things don't happen as we would want or we would expect to. And so in this circumstance, they've come back to Jesus and they, they've said to him, why hasn't this happened? Why hasn't this happened? You know, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And yet under this circumstance, what happened there? Now, roll the clock forward a couple of thousand years to today. Some people, they say that this is all we need. We need the word of God. We need to preach the word of God. We need to understand the word of God and tell people about the word of God and God will do everything else. The gifts are not for today. So that's one sort of extreme view of the fact that there are no gifts, there are no healings, there are no... Now, the biggest miracle is when you're born again. Yeah, and everybody can testify in their heart that they're born again. But the Lord says, you know, to get more people born again, you will go out in my name and you will see these signs. So why don't we see sometimes these signs? And why sometimes are we hindered that we don't have these signs? This is what we're looking at here. And so... You could be crowded in your mind. Well, well, maybe they're a bit right that it was just for the New Testament times. It doesn't say that particularly in there, but you can maybe squeeze out some theology somewhere along the line. And then on the other hand, you'll have people that are completely of faith, faith healers, you might even call them, and stuff. And as I lay hands on you, sister, brother, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Whether you are healed or not, you've got to go away in faith that you're healed. And so you have these two extremes. One where we don't really believe, and one where somebody prays for you and you're not actually healed. And so both of those of you think that you're not really working, are they? One is obviously saying, no, no, this doesn't belong here anymore. Now, if you're in a situation or in a crowd like this, and, and you get up, to preach and to pray, whatever it is, is there going to be some hindrance? Why does Jesus say 2,000 years ago, oh, you perverse crowd, what was happening there? Because he doesn't really seem to blame, in some ways, his disciples. He's looking at that generation. What was happening in that crowd? He'd gone away. He came back. He'd gone away. He came back. And he sees these. And what does he say? You perverse crowd. You lack of understanding. Why don't you, you know, why has this not happened? And, stuff. And, and his disciples, because they wanted to know, obviously came to him and said, why didn't this happen? They'd seen miracles. They'd seen things happen in their name. Why didn't it happen at that time? Why does it not happen sometimes? And so what was happening there? You were having lots of religious people and they were discussing and debating was, as we know now and we celebrate about Jesus being our Messiah, and Roger, I've got to say that again, I suppose, Hosanna in the highest. You know, God is with us. That 
we understand that, you know, Jesus was the Messiah and Christ. But this was a big thing to him, that there was a servant king coming. They were still debating this. The Pharisees fought some things, the Sadducees fought some things, and these were educated rabbinic men that knew their Old Testament, well, it wasn't the Old Testament then, obviously, but it was, they knew their scriptures and stuff. And the disciples were fishermen, tax, well, not a tax collector, but of all various types of people, but not, generally speaking, I would have said experts. They weren't rabbis and stuff. They weren't um, priests and experts. And so were they getting bewildered by a conversation and a mix of things going on? You can't, you know, the scriptures aren't totally clear on this. I don't want to have too much conjecture. But let us say that there was this whole mess of unbelief, etc. They came. I don't know about you. It, it depends really what your situation. When you go out and you do something, you have sort of like confidence and a boldness and you're listening to God. Sometimes somebody might come to you with something, which you, you can't then, all of a sudden, you've got this situation in front of you which you're not expecting. And obviously this poor father was desperate. You know, it'd been years that this son had been doing this. He'd, he'd made his way to, to get his son healed. He wanted his son healed. Jesus wasn't there. So he's gone to the disciples. Disciples have prayed for him. He hasn't been delivered. And sometimes this happens, you see. And, and, and should we give up? Should we give up because once when we pray for somebody, something doesn't happen? No, of course we shouldn't. And what we should do is we should seek Jesus. We don't have Jesus here to go and ask, like the disciples did. They said, well, why didn't this happen? But we have a much closer, we're born-again Christians. We have a much closer relationship. We should be saying to Jesus, you know, why didn't this happen? Why didn't this work? We should be working through these things to get an understanding and a grip of why we don't see sometimes the, the, the things that we might expect to see. It's a profound thing that when you pray for somebody, you're seeking God to heal them. It's not through your own strength. It's not through your own might. It's by the Holy Spirit. Now, when Jesus basically set this boy free, it was a wonderful thing to see. Now, I've had two similar circumstances uh, to, to this, where I've, I've been out in a, in a small village in India, and they brought a child to me, and it is exactly the same. Fell down in front of me, and uh, stuff. And obviously, my mind quickly revolved around two thousand years ago to this child on the floor, and stuff, and that he was possessed. And I just had the translator. I'd got separated from the rest of us, we'd been going from village to village, a bit like the instructions had said in, in Luke, you know, because we were holding meetings every night in a big church for people to come, get saved, to be delivered, etc., because there was a lot of demonic things going on in India and stuff. And so there was this child down there. And so I prayed for him to be released, and he didn't get released. The crowds gathered around, got very aggressive, and in the end... I had, you know, the translator was getting fearful that we were going to get attacked. There must have been 70, 80, 100 people around us, all budging, whatever it is. The boy remained on the ground. All I could say is bring him to the church and go. I never saw the child again. Very upsetting. And so I sought the Lord about this a, a lot to try and understand what had happened that day and uh, stuff. And it is that, it, it's that listening to God of what does God want you to do. But sometimes these circumstances are thrust upon you. And you don't have the faith at that particular moment that you know, God would give you. I don't understand why this poor little child I had to leave. Two days or thereabouts later, I was again in the village. They brought a woman to me this time. And she went down again. And stuff, and I, I, was, I was bereft. Oh, just the thought. I thought, not again. And I literally just shouted, Lord, not again. I thought, you know, this, I've got to raise this, this, this woman. 
a little bit in my own strength, but I just cried out to God. And the woman got up. She wasn't delivered, but she got up. I got her out of this dumb, deaf and dumb spirit. I just got her up. And I was so relieved. I just thought, you know, how could this happen twice? I mean, it's probably not happened to any of you. I don't know. Has, it, has anybody had a deaf and dumb spirit go down like that before? Probably, probably not. So this is the second time now in just a couple of days. And so I've got her up, and I've, you, you would not believe how relieved I was because I, I, I did not want to leave another person like that. And what would have happened if it didn't? I don't know to this day, obviously. And so I've asked her to come to the meeting, and a few days later, this woman comes up to me in the big meeting that we were having. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't recognize her. And stuff. So I started praying for bang, she goes down. <laughs> Again, that's something. Oh, that's her. <laughs> and stuff. But it was a little bit different this time. I was with five or six believers. I, hadn't, I wasn't on my own, I wasn't separated. And we prayed and we got her delivered. Praise God that she was delivered. She came up. The demons left her. She was like a new creation. And, you know, it's, it's the most wonderful thing. If you have not seen this, it's the power of God that we need in our lives. It's not, you know, you know we want to make a difference in this world and uh, stuff. And it, it's, it's the power of God. I don't know why the little child, I couldn't do something because I still think, oh, to this day. But the lady was delivered. I don't know what happened to the child. I still wonder, and I pray to God about him. I actually pray for him more now, actually, strangely enough. He's a man now, and uh, stuff, because it's a few years ago. At the same time in there, there was, one, there was one woman, and she came back after being delivered a day or two later. We had meetings for about a week in this big church. And she was so demonized, she was like, had like, it's difficult to describe, but her face was almost distorted. When she came back, she was unrecognizable. And, you know, unless you've seen these things yourself, you can't quite take in, you know, you know how bad it is when somebody has actually got a demon within them. And, it, and, it, and it's torturing and it's, and it's frustrating. It's, it's, it's a horrible, horrible thing and stuff. And, you know, when you, when you set people free, it's, 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 a, it, it's, a wonder, it's a wonderful thing. And as Jesus says, you see, and this is where I'm not quite sure why they've missed that, 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 those scriptures out, you see. But there's two things, you see. Jesus, when he started the day, he, he'd start the day with prayer and fasting. Are we ready for what the day will bring us? Are we ready for what the day will bring us? Are we ready when the circumstance of something that comes upon us? Are we in the Holy Spirit? Are we in his presence that we know what to do? I think the disciples have got very distracted they were confident that maybe that they could deal with the situation as, as, as it came apart. A bit like I was confident. I thought I'd get that boy up. I thought that boy would rise and stuff. But obviously with the crowd battering around me, the translator getting whatever it was, and, and, and he wasn't. It possibly needed prayer and fasting. There is, there is an, a, a very, very uh, heavily disabled autistic child that I know um, at, the ch at the church here in London that I go to in, 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 in Ealing and the parents have asked me to pray for him and I've gone there and they can't not believe the change and why he changes when I'm there the, you know, with the Holy Spirit and God is there but I haven't healed him but they want me always to go because they say for a few weeks afterwards he's like changed that one I think only comes out by prayer and fasting I haven't given up and stuff, you know, many people have prayed. He's been to many, many meetings and stuff. And I, I'm see, uh, seeking the Lord. It's, it's, it's on my mind. You know, God is mighty and stuff. And it's sometimes there, there is some debate in, in Scripture. You, you, you know, there was a chap called, some of you are even old enough to maybe remember who he was, but there was a, there was, there was a mighty evangelist healer called Smith Wigglesworth uh, from Roger smiling there. And uh, stuff. And if, if you've never if you've never read anything about him, I would encourage you to do so. But he thought everything, any illness or injury, was 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 to do with the demonic. And in his early ministry, he'd literally punch people. He'd punch the evil out of them, and stuff because he was a blunt plumber, 
but he was just full of the Holy Spirit, whatever it is. He got milder as the years went by, and he realized maybe he didn't always have to punch somebody. So somebody's got want some deliverance, and, you know, and they're expecting a punch. You know, imagine that. Do you, do you know what I mean? But the fact is, even with him, his, his, his daughter was, was, was deaf, and he prayed for her many times. He had kidney stones and stuff which passed through him in the end, and God didn't heal him. But this was a mighty man of God, accredited to raise people from the dead, many people from their sick beds, etc. But it didn't always work for, for him. You see, you, you, you know, we, we look at that, but what we need to do is we need to start somewhere. You know, some of you might not have prayed for somebody that's been sick or, or, or the, they're healed, but you've got to start somewhere. But how do you start? Where do you start? The Bible says, you know, Jesus says you just need that seed of mustard seed. The father in, uh, that, that was so desperate, Jesus said to him, this is in, 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 in Luke, there's, uh, no, sorry, in, in Mark. It's, it's, in, it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this, but it's much briefer in, 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 in Luke. But in Mark... Jesus says, do you believe that I can hear him? And he says, help my unbelief. Now, Jesus will meet us wherever we are. So he's saying, will you have that? And, and the father just so desperately says, help me in my unbelief. He just wants his son healed. And there's, a, there's, that, sort of, there's that sort of passion and compassion. Um, years, years ago, I, 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 again, this was in, in, a, in another country and stuff. And there's something about when God sends you out. I, I put a list of some of the countries where... Well, I've been to administer Germany, Malta, Ireland, India, Hong Kong, Philippines, United States, just some of them, yeah? Okay? And there's something about when you go out doing wanting to do God's will that he meet, meets you in, in, in a greater way and, and stuff, and he answers your prayers clearer. And we used to have in this, this I think was in, in India as well, we used to have these huge great queues of people that, because they were desperate. See, we've got the NHS. In India, if you're poor, you've got nothing You've got nothing. And so they come expecting a healing. They want a healing because they've got no other option. And so you would have these huge queues of people to be prayed for and to be healed. And one night I just got overwhelmed. It was just like this huge queue. You know, and they circled it. It was like they penned. They had these ropes and they penned. And we just had like this huge line of things. And I, I just lost the, the faith. And I said, oh, Lord. You, you, you know, it was just too much for me. And it was too much for me, but it's not too much for God. It's not too much for God. So I sought him, and he just said every single person just loved them. And that was the message. The following night, oh, the miracles. But sometimes we need to listen and just sit back and listen. Now, when Jesus says that that needs to come out, some by prayer, some by fasting, whatever it is. We need to listen to God. Sometimes we mustn't be manipulated by somebody's need. We need to be sensitive. So if somebody comes up and says, you know, you don't know, I need prayer for this, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, you know, listen to God. What is God wanting to say say to you? Some of you might be enough in, in the Holy Spirit that you can say, yes, I will pray for you now. But what Jesus is saying, I think, is that, you know, sometimes some things don't come out automatically, that they come out by prayer, fasting, and stuff. Other times people have done so much prayer and fasting that, you know, they are in, 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 you know, they have got a gift of healing. But every one of us is meant to operate. He didn't send out two people. When Jesus sent out, he sent out 72 people. He sent out a lot of people to go and proclaim what was, what was going on. It is for all of us. We've got to start somewhere. I don't know if you, any of you know much about mustard seeds, but mustard seeds are very small. And I've actually, I've, I've never planted mustard seeds until actually last autumn. So I was ignorant of, of you know, mustard seed. And I actually looked up online the big mustard tree that grows in, 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 in the Mediterranean areas and uh, Israel and those places. And it's a big, handsome tree once it actually gets growing. But a mustard speed is, is, is very small. And we use them here. And they, they, they seem to grow very, very easily. That um, in the autumn, you put them down to actually get oxygen into the ground. And then they grow and you dig them in the plants. And almost beside themselves, they seem to grow. So I don't know when... when you know, mustard seeds and mountains were used quite a lot in the New Testament. And it, it, it was a, a sort of a, a discussion. But all I know is that once you have a mustard seed, you pop that in, that seems to grow. 
I would, you know, some people might almost say it was a weed or something that grows as effectively. You know, a lot of the really nice plants, as we know, we have to really nurture and care for. So whether Jesus was using that or not, there's a lot of discussion about mustard seeds. But what, what is the point is, is that, you know, you just start with a little bit of faith. God will do the rest. And if you haven't even got that little bit of faith, as we, as we saw with the Father, he just, just help me in my unbelief. Help me to have that faith. You know, we want to have an adventure with God. G, uh, uh, Roger hadn't mentioned that I've, I've, I have been an elder at um, Haven Green Baptist Church for the last three years or so. And what I was finding was that I was getting involved in doing all sorts of more administration, negotiations, building work, and things like this. And I was finding that I was, I was, I was not, you know, I, I, I want to see more of, of God in my life, in other people's lives and stuff. So I, I personally, and it's, it's a declaration that I've made, is that I've, I've sort of set myself aside now to, to basically see more of God, to see more people delivered, to see more people set free. And a bit like, a, like because th- that's important. You know, the Bible says about going out and seeing people set free. And in, in the few weeks and months, I can see I'm, I'm having people confess things to me that from discussions that I've never, you know, I've, I've been at work with people for years, and all of a sudden they're, 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 they're talking to me about God and uh, stuff. And what we've got to do is we've got to set ourselves aside with prayer and, and fasting. We want to see things change. That's what happens. It comes to knowing the Father, knowing what the Father wants. And it, it, it's, 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 it's... Let me just check on time here. I've got a couple more minutes. It's... It's knowing what God wants of, of, of us. Some people might never see huge, great miracles. But the Bible is quite clear that it, it, it does say to see, seek after the spiritual gifts. It's your choice of how, what adventure you want to have with God. If you want to be able to have in your memories that you've touched a leper and you've seen a leper healed, that you've seen blind eyes open. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It is, it is difficult. I, I don't know why. And this is something I'm seeking God. And I might even change address. This is how serious I am. Is to say to the Lord, I want to be in your service. Am I not recognized maybe in my hometown? Every scripture that I'm go, going through. Because I am setting my face that I want to see more of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. You have that same choice. You have that same command, actually, because it isn't something that we, we do just because we think, oh, this is going to be fun or adventure. It's because God actually commands us to do these things. But oh, what a wonderful adventure it actually is. You know, when people go out and they see things happening abroad and they spend that time in going to Nepal and various things, what a wonderful thing it is. And it should encourage us and bring, bring us back that we have more of an expectation just here and at home. So young people, you know, I'd encourage you to go out on mission. Older people, I'd encourage you just to seek the Lord and to see, you know, what would he want you to do? There's never a time not to start, not to do something, not to go back. The disciples had seen success. They saw failure. They went straight to Jesus. Why didn't this happen? And he gave them an answer, you you know, that I believe that, you know, with an explanation that they were confused or whatever it is, but not to give up. Look at the mighty miracles once they receive the Holy Spirit. Look, for instance, when they're just walking by and say, gold or silver we do not have, but in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. You know, these were transformed people once they'd received the power of the Holy Spirit to do work. They were doing it then, but then they had a greater confidence. There are three things that I want to leave you with is not to get distracted by what other people's beliefs are. You choose in your quiet time, in your praying time, what you think God would want you to do. You know, when we say the Lord's Prayer, your will be done. We're there to listen to, 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 to what is his will for our lives. We all are different. God has made us all wonderfully different. We have different talents, different ways that we will do about it. Some have great hospitality some have beautiful voices to sing and worship and the Holy Spirit will come, come down. 
Shekinah glory. We all have different talents, but it's seeking the Lord to say, what would you want me to do? One, the first and foremost, is we're all told to go and make disciples. And as part of that, that is obviously not to get distracted, but to pray and listen to what your Father in heaven wants you to do. And just start with that little mustard seed. And one of the things that Smith Wigglesworth used to say quite often, and you know, some of his books are titled that, was John 14, 12. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So Jesus is now with the Father, and he's, he's actually said that, you know, we can do greater works. And, uh, stuff. and I don't know about Roger. Roger, Roger's, you know, the same as my, myself. It, you know, we want to see more of, 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 of God in our lives, more of the supernatural and uh, stuff. So anybody that, you know, we were saying about prayer and everything, anybody wants to come up to me after, after the service for some prayer, for a bit more mustard seed and stuff, please, please do. And stuff. And I just want to encourage you that you know that God really does does work. Sometimes it doesn't work, but you don't give up. I had that in, in, you know that exact same thing where I couldn't raise that child. So I have a lot of empathy for those disciples. And I'd been praying. I was on fire with God. I saw that week or something, perhaps a hundred people saved. It was more than I could count. If you see what I mean, I conducted the service and the power of the Holy Spirit in. In, in, in that church, it was, it, was, it was wonderful and stuff. But to leave that one child was terrible and uh, stuff. You know, when you see somebody that is so desperate, you, know, you don't you know, get that heart and that compassion and that love that God would want you to have for the unsaved, for the ones that are oppressed from drink, from alcohol, etc. And it, it was interesting that you mentioned about that chap that was a binge drinker. You know, God does set us free. Alcohol is a terrible thing. And, and stuff when it is, when it is abused and, and stuff. And God sets free everything. So we're not just talking about demon possession. We're talking about habits, bad habits, perseverance. You can pray and fast those things through for people. And I'll just close in prayer because I think they want to come in or are edging towards that. And I just want to encourage you that next time I come, it would be nice if you share something from after today. I've said about crossing the Jordan last, last time, about any besetting sins or anything that's hindering you, and before that, about being full of joy. So you all look a bit happier. Maybe that's worked from a few, a few months ago. So I'll just finish in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, I, I just pray, Lord, that we, as, as we look towards just having that little bit extra of faith, Lord, and that how it gathers up, Lord, that you want this world changed, Lord. You want all the horrible things and that are here to be changed through us. You want us to be your servants as we go out as ambassadors before you to seek the lost, to heal the brokenhearted. Lord, and I, I just pray, Lord, that there's a lot of broken hearts. I just sense that really as, as, as a prayer, Lord, that we're here to show your love and your compassion, Lord, and how deep your love is for, for, for the unsaved, Lord. And and as have we received your run, wonderful, wonderful salvation, Lord, and as we look towards you, the risen Christ, Lord, in heaven, Lord, that these greater gifts will come upon us all. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.